Welcome back to Undulations. In this video, I'm going to be focusing on this thing, which is a electromagnetic field detector. And uh, you'll see it referred to in posts on Instagram or wherever as a EM coil or an EMF coil. And if you want to buy one, you can search for telephone pickup coil because it's got a little suction cup on it. That's the way that these used to be used. You would put it on the handset of an old style telephone and could record that into a tape recorder or that sort of thing. Now, first thing I want to talk about, as it is a very simple thing, it's not even as complicated as a, a basic microphone. It doesn't have any other parts in it other than a coil. You might could get a fancier one. You might could make your own. But when it comes to safety, I'll say that the one thing that applies is that it doesn't really have any sort of regulation on the signal strength that you can get, so the voltages that you can get. These voltages are induced by a changing magnetic field, and it turns out that it just depends a lot on the details of the situation. How fast is the field fluctuating? How strong is the field? And so it can be kind of unpredictable. And Something like a cell phone has got a very small signal, but it's moving fast, so you can pick that up. Something more like a motor that you saw for that fan in the introduction of this video. Uh, you can hear that from even further away. And I just wanted to show that at the very beginning to say that distance is your friend in this sort of thing. Don't put the detector near something that is potentially strong. Maybe you haven't used it before for this type of thing and then turn it on. You want to come at it from a distance and see how it behaves. And so just bear that in mind. The other thing, if you're doing your phone, you might think, oh, it's not very loud or something like that. You're just getting the screen. If suddenly the ringer goes off and you have this in the wrong spot, it could be an overwhelming signal as well. So just bear that in mind that you want to protect your gear and you want to protect your ears, especially if you have it set up in that way where you're monitoring. And then briefly, just why would we use this sort of thing? It's, uh, as is the case with a lot of field recording, it depends a lot on the things that you have in your house, the places that you can go and try and grab some sounds with this thing. You record them, and it can be a way to add some very personalized sounds to your sound library, some that can be very strange and that you probably couldn't get any other way. Now. Before we get started with a more detailed discussion and some hands-on things, I feel like that it's worth talking about genre for a second. Uh, from the intro, it's kind of obvious that you could uh, do something like this in sort of an ambient piece. And uh, you can certainly have more than one of these. And the other thing is, is that you can do um, what I like to call field mixing, where the, you have multiple sources lying around the uh, detector here. And that's the sort of thing that you can do to combine signals that is difficult to do if you don't have like a big mixer or that sort of thing. And so uh, run it through some effects and you really can have some uh, ambient types of uh, soundscapes where that you're adjusting things away from the detector and closer to the detector as a form of sort of physical mixing that's very nice. But then I also think that it's worth thinking about just sampling from this and so that it's something that you can uh, take into audacity or whatever your favorite tool is for sort of cleaning up sounds and turning them into uh, things that can be part of you know more lo-fi beats or that type of thing and again some originality comes through by having sounds that are just you know that that snare drum is like a processed form of my microwave led all right, so the rest of this video is going to be a little bit of theory about how this thing works and then just looking at a whole lot of examples. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here's a EMF coil, telephone pickup coil up close, coils in the body there and then there's a suction cup and a wire that terminates in a 3.5 millimeter mono jack so a ts jack 
Now, by way of comparison, we've got this size coil and we have changing magnetic fields. It's quite similar to this thing, which is a dynamic microphone. So not a powered microphone with a capsule or anything like that, but just a coil and a diaphragm in there. And so it's quite similar and the voltages turn out to be quite similar. I'm gonna use an adapter and it's not the best adapter, so I'm gonna have to sort of hold things just right and I don't want to get any feedback either. And uh, let's see if I can get it to work. Um, mic's on. Okay, so talking into dynamic mic, going through this little Radio Shack amplifier and you're hearing it on the field recorder. And so this first example with the EMF coil is just going to be direct listening uh, with it as an input into this little uh, amplifier. And uh, I'm going to turn it on and um, as a source I'm going to use the, uh, this is a USB fan that I think I used in the intro. and. So you can hear that. I'm going to try and put it over here near that field recorder to get some better sound. A little bit of clipping on the audio there. Um, I'll back it up a little. I can turn this down. Now, it's a lot more likely that you might have a guitar amp or some equivalent that you could also use for this sort of direct listening. And uh, I'm gonna, I've got an adapter cable and a um, barrel connector here. And uh, so this is just going to send the pickup coil into the amp input and uh, get the same type of thing. I'll use the fan over here. All right, so maybe a mini amp, maybe a guitar amp, but these might not be that common. And yet I feel like for people watching this channel, I should talk about some other ways. Uh, you might have a basil dude. It's the same way as with a contact microphone. You can send a pickup coil in here and uh, listen to it on the other side. For at least uh, stronger signals, that works. And then I have another uh, mixer here, and this video is a little bit tricky because, uh, I don't know, I'm showing a lot of what I have and can do it with, but uh, I'm hoping that you can just sort of uh, get some ideas and come up with what you yourself have got. Um, I have other stuff like, uh, this is the Voltec Nano Garden. This would uh, take uh, actually two EMF coils and put uh, some nice effects on it. Uh, I don't think I've ever done it, but I'm sure you could do it with uh, uh, Basel Instruments Time, and uh, that would probably give some really nice sounds. Then if you see EMF coils on the internet, particularly on Instagram, you see pickup coils a lot with the Coma Field Kit. This is the Field Kit FX. And so that will work because it's specifically got a uh, gain producing input. And so uh, that's one way. And then the uh, original Coma Field Kit is another great way to do this sort of thing. So there are lots of options for what I consider to be direct listening. But uh, another way, and it's probably my favorite way, is to just send the EMF coil straight into the field recorder and so that's what I'm going to do for a lot of this video. Um, I'll take the one that I have right now and uh, I might end up doubling the channel but I've got it recording in stereo and this is just going to be mono and 
the main thing with the uh, field recorder is, you know, you don't want to break it, but if you do monitor, um, I recommend monitoring. I'm going to do it with a little speaker um, versus headphones because uh, sometimes you can uh, be dealing with weak signals, and so your inclination is to turn uh, record level up, turn the volume up, but once you start doing that, uh, anything like little uh, pops from the um, just just a, a plug and static or that sort of thing can be quite loud. So let's come back to the fan here, and uh, I'm going to turn that on, and we'll see if we get anything out of that. Yeah, so that's coming through on one channel, and I like this fan when it starts and stops. And that made it clip, so I can turn down the record level or just hold it a little bit further away. This is not the best sound, but it's just to give an example. This is easy at least. All right, so you get the idea that it'll work with the field recorder. And uh, now what I want to do is do a little bit more of a uh, full setup here by pulling this one. And I've got a pair prepared for some stereo. And to do that, you just basically need a, you need a Y cable. So this is a 3.5 millimeter stereo that comes to two monos. And I've got two barrel connectors. And then that is coming out to all right, two of the pickup coils. All right, so um, let's put this into here. And I'm still going to monitor on the uh, little Sony speaker over here. And uh, then um, we've got these. I'm going to test again on the fan. Okay, so that's working. Now let's start to introduce some different types of sounds. Uh, you know, because if it was just a hum that you could get out of it, it wouldn't be very entertaining. Um, I've got a, uh, this is a little uh, $5 disco ball LED light that I picked up and uh, took, I took the lid off of it and uh, I'm going to put a detector down in that. Um, I want to turn it on first. I think I may do it off camera just because of the flashing, um, but it's not probably that bad. All right, so we've got the light on one channel. Then on the other channel, I'm going to do uh, something and we'll talk about this in the next section about a little bit about the theory of this. Um, I'm going to take a pocket operator and I'm tapping off of the pocket operator speaker there. Now, uh, I need one more thing. I've got this timer and uh, it's got a pretty loud sort of uh, pop signal. I'm going to position it to try and get it sort of in the mix. And I'm not espousing it as uh, great music by a long shot, but I think I may need to. Alright, that's a little better like that. Then, last thing is, uh, this is a noise, white noise source, just some waves. And the thing that I want to emphasize, I'm going to turn it off when I talk. The thing that I want to emphasize is that 
this is an example of noise in the room. And if I have it up over here, we can hear it on my voice mic, but it's not being picked up. So I'm just trying to emphasize that we're combining a bunch of different signals, two different channels, and we've got room noise. And I'm gonna just play the track with the coils so you can hear that the um, wave noise isn't even on there. If I want to add it in, I can. All right, so that's just an example of the type of thing you can do with this uh, stereo pickup coil setup. And uh, field recorder is very handy for that sort of thing. And uh, if you don't have one, uh, I'll talk at the very end of the video about some other choices. At this point, I want to backtrack a little and uh, think some about the uh, theory behind a pickup coil. I normally don't try to do any math or anything in these videos, but uh, in this case, it's at least worth talking a little bit about uh, behind the scenes of one of these things, because uh, it's uh, how we can look for interesting sounds. And so uh, let's go ahead and dig into that a little bit. All right, so there's finally a case where the seems like a little calculus would be helpful for this type of thing but I'm not going to really address anything specific other than to say that the uh, first derivative of the magnetic field with respect to time is what induces the current in the field coil and then that makes a voltage that becomes a signal uh, in audacity or uh, whatever you're looking at it in. And so that's why if I have a magnet here, um, and I've got my other magnetic detector over here, um, if I just put the magnet by the field coil, you don't hear anything. All right, there's no change. And the other thing is that if I could sort of linearly bring the magnet in and make the field increase smoothly, or decrease smoothly just like that you still don't hear anything it's making a current and that's going into the field recorder but it's basically a flat signal so super low frequency zero frequency signal that probably isn't even recorded or it's rejected uh, by the recorder so it needs to be a uh, changing change if that makes sense so second derivative um to, to really get some sort of uh voltage that you'll get some sounds out of and so to give an example of that i've got a, another couple of magnets uh, these are just fridge magnets stuck to the kalimba tines over here and i'm going to try and ease this onto the into the field <laughs> Okay, so you can hear that, and then I have this other one. Okay, so here's a case of something that makes a acoustic sound by vibrations in the air that we hear as a tone, and uh, yet it's also the right thing for uh, making a changing magnetic field that makes a uh, changing current that we can hear in the field recorder and this is really something to think about in terms of uh, 
Fourier transforms, uh, spectral decomposition, you can think of it as even like an equalizer where the sand is made up of a lot of, uh, you, can, you can break it down into a lot of sine waves and these derivatives that I'm talking about, so rates of change with respect to time in terms of the calculus, um, you take the derivative of a sine wave and you get another wave of the same frequency, a cosine. And, and so you get, a, you can think of it as a change of sine or a change of phase, but it's basically, it stays the same. So this is why something like the pocket operator, when you put a pickup coil next to it, it sounds like the pocket op operator, no, uh, it's not distorted or uh, undecipherable. And so it, it's really cool because uh, that is uh, not entirely obvious why it would work that way. And uh, it's also why this thing exists, because remember it was for recording telephone calls. Now, the, the upshot of all of this is to look for things where they... Uh, change and where the change changes and so for example this thing is a candle that flickers and uh, you can kind of see it um, it's not yeah okay uh, it's phasing a little bit with the camera but anyway point being that uh, a lot of times um, circuits use what's called pulse width modulation that's something that you'll see on synthesizers it's the same thing, so that basically to dim the light, you just have it uh, not on all the time. So it's on for a little bit, and then there's a gap, and then on again. And by changing that, you can change how it, uh, the intensity of how it looks. And when you hear that, pretty amazing. And so if you listen to that kind of carefully, there's a lot of structure down in that sound that's being caused by this flickering. And if I were to like slow it down and put some reverb on it, it would uh, probably sound pretty cool. So now we're at a part of the video that I've really been looking forward to, and it's just sort of a show and tell, you know, uh, stuff I have around the house that makes interesting sounds, interesting to me at least, and, uh, you know, once you get set up with a way to record and the coil, then you'll find that uh, you just sort of go and look for things, try and do it carefully, as I've said, come up to stuff. Here's what my fuel quarter sounds like. Who knows? I don't know. Um, now, over here, this is a lava light, and uh, it's got a motor that's making the little lava pellets go, but it's also got a, uh, a changing intensity LED, so you can get the motor sound, I think, there, but then this it's almost like a cord there. And you can hear some uh, phase type sounding things. That's the pulse width modulation so motor. LED, you can kind of get a blend. Okay, I like that thing. Then, uh, turn it off. Um, again, I'm hearing quite a bit of noise with this much stuff around and things on. 
you never know. Um, uh, you'll find that things that transmit, so uh, remote controls, this is a thing for a drone. I did a shot one time where I had the drone fly over the EMF coil. Uh, it was interesting, I mean, but it just sounded terrible. So I have never shown that. This is the... Nothing particularly great on that, but just to remind me to tell you that things that have connectivity are often interesting. Uh, this is a Bluetooth keyboard, and uh, I heard that. I mean, this is a point to sort of also talk about how the, it doesn't necessarily always seem like it would be that great to have all these fields around us, but I'm not trying to be a tinfoil hat guy or anything, but, you know, just a little caution. I push the pairing button. Interesting. Okay, then, uh, let's see, what else? Um, this is a boogie board that is basically something you write on, but uh, I figured out that if, when you do the delete feature, you get kind of like a video game sound. Okay, um, now motors, you know, they have uh, definitely got magnets, but they've also got arcs, which, uh, you know, so sparking occasionally. So depending on the type of motor, you can get a lot of uh, electromagnetic fields that are radiating out. Um, this is a uh, thing that you uh, foam milk with, and uh, it's pretty strong, so I'm going to, man, you can hear it all the way over there. And I'm just uh, freezing it with my grip. All right, so uh, that's quite powerful because uh, it's fast and uh, intense magnetism, so it's no surprise. Um, let's see, this is a f sort of a favorite. Um, these uh, LED lights have, uh, I I've used this in a couple of videos, but they've got a really beautiful, almost like a chord sound. Okay, and then this next thing is a little specialized, but some of you might have some little bits. Um, all right, I've got the power bit and then the oscillator bit, and then that's going through the noise bit in the, I think it's in sample and hold mode. And then um, this is the, it's sort of like the motor in your phone or in a pager or whatever, that's a vibration motor. And so, by using the oscillator to control the frequency of this, you can get some cool effects. And just to reiterate, that we can we're not trapped to any one thing, so. So that's some cool stuff, and there's a ton of things you can do with little bits along these lines, and it's it's uh, really an important uh, thing to add to your uh, sort of thoughts about little bits, because a lot of times I find that I don't have enough ways to collect the signals, and uh, so this is basically a fairly inexpensive way to uh, pick up signals from your little bit system. 
And uh, now the next to last thing that I have here, I think could be something that was pretty artistic if I uh, put some time on it. Um, I've got a uh, magnetic sand timer. So this makes sort of a magnetic sculpture when you uh, run the, the uh, magnetic filings to the bottom. But uh, if you think about that, there's a big magnet down here on this pad. When I start to let the uh, magnetic sand fall, it's going to modify that field, modulate that field in a uh, very random way. So it's sort of a, a noise generator. And hopefully we can hear it over the background noise that I've got going. Well, it's kind of a work in progress. All right, then the last thing, uh, this is a little bit unexpected uh, to me. This is a uh, thing that rotates when it's uh, got four solar cells. And um, when you, uh, God, it's bright. Um, when you put light on it, um, it'll rotate. And um, oh, it's real dusty. Um, the whole thing, is how would something like this work i think it's geared and i think the um solar cells just run like a little uh, solenoid and so the rate is determined by the amount of light it is some crazy low frequencies Last thing I want to do, uh, in some ways, it's kind of a historical thought that when these first came out, um, didn't have field recorders, we had tape decks. And uh, so uh, something like this would have been used with the coil to record a conversation on the phone. And I can't even remember what I was using as the source, but you get the idea that you can do the same sort of thing. And uh, this is starting to shape up as something that's kind of a, a, on a budget also because the EM coil isn't very expensive. The tape tech, uh, I got this one at a thrift shop. I can't remember how much it was, but so this video has been a whole lot of fun to do. I like this type of stuff. It's kind of retro trip down memory lane. Uh, it's some interesting sounds too. So. Uh, I'm going to close the video out by putting uh, a uh, EMF coil into the mic jack of this uh, micro cassette recorder, sample some different things the way we've been doing in the video, and then play it back at half speed through the core NTS-1 for some reverb, and uh, hopefully we'll get something that we like. So I uh, hope everybody's doing well. Appreciate you watching, and I'll see you in the next video.